Maddie. Yes. Huge thank you for being a part of our Peter Cushing documentary. Oh, I'm thrilled. And we've just spent the last, it feels like, day and a half. It does, because we've talked about everything under the sun. And a little bit about Peter Cushing. As well. I've sat <clears> in <throat> Christine Keeler's chair. How about that? Christine Keeler's chair, which is just Do you remember that chair mm-hmm. when she sat like that? I was photographed probably while it was still warm by that photographer Good when goodness. I was 13. Yes. We should have got you a, ch- a similar chair for the interview, of course. But His name didn't... was Lewis Morley. He was a theatrical photographer. Very nice. There you go. Yeah. Wonderful of you to be on the documentary. And we're just going to take a few minutes to have a, a bit of a chat Lovely. after the interview. I am delighted to Find do Find out it. a little bit more about you. And what a great career you've had. Thank you. Bond girl, hammer girl, carry on girl. You've oh, I in... loved that carry on scene. Oh, I did enjoy that. Mrs. Pullet in carry on matron. I think that's sort of, sort of the best, one of the best moments of my life. I do love that scene. I love the line. I love the scene. I love the sausage. Ding. They were a bizarre set of films. What a collect, collection of characters. Oh, they were so nice, there. all of them. I mean, I wish I'd worked with all of them. I just got Hattie Jakes and Barbara Windsor, and I, yes, yes, that was it. And the director was such a lovely guy too. Oh, Gerald Thomas. Gerald Thomas, oh, yeah. And please may I set the record straight. Go on. Peter Rogers was a dream. Oh, a really? A dream boat, and everybody loved him. I read somewhere, some awful article I just read about the carry-ons, and I wanted to shout and scream and write letters saying, oh, and the actors didn't like him. They loved him. They thought he was fab. Oh, they always say he was mean and everything. That was the sort of joke. He wasn't mean at all. It was constant employment for a lot of people. And it but only took about a month to make. They turned out a lot of those films, didn't they? They did. They were wonderful. Not all of them as funny as no, some of them. No, they're very varied. Be. They are very varied. Mm. But I was with family a few days ago and they were saying that they just adore them. I hear that a lot. Nice bit of entertainment turns mm. up on the TV. Wonderful. A rainy weekend film. Yes, indeed. And of course, James Bond. Let uh, let indeed. Roger Moore must have been absolutely divine. He was. I really do genuinely miss him a lot. He was, uh, th- more than anything, funny. And I do like funny people. He was so quick-witted. And the, and the diaries that have just been republished um, of his time mm. uh, on making Live and Let Die are an absolute dream. I mean, he informs me in that. <laughs> what I hadn't remembered was it were three people under my legs pulling at this terrible Trying wire. Trying to get the zip down. Yes, yes, three people. I thought it was only one, but it was actually three. I mean, so you've spoilt it now. Everybody would have assumed it. No, they much. wouldn't. Wasn't it? No. Yeah. No, it wasn't. And nobody would be that yeah. thick. Okay, fair enough. No, no. It was a very pretty watch, but it didn't do magic tricks. No. It was some kind of, I don't know, fish wire, chicken wire, or I don't know. Some bizarre contraption. Yeah, cotton. I've no idea what it was, but we had the special effects guy, we had the wardrobe guy, and there was another lovely guy who I actually met again the other day called Ian, who was about 12 at the time. I had the three of them under me knickers, quite literally. <laughs> Well, it's true. Well, there we are. It, but it created the right effect. It that's, did. It was sweet. After. Yeah, very funny. It was three adorable days in bed and in the cupboard. Yes. OK. I preferred the bed. If someone's coming in part way through this conversation, you could be uh, quite think, confused as to what we're going on about. A. My grandmother What's always used to say A. And I'd say, yes, Nana, what? But she didn't know she'd said it. So I'll say A. So we're recording the interview here at Elstree Studios. How does it feel to be back at Elstree? Well, it's changed, I have to tell you. There used to be a huge sign-up outside saying Thorn EMI or Brian Forbes or whatever was happening at the time. Well, that's gone. Um, But other than that, I mean, it's vast still. You don't realise how big it is. It stretches out. Yeah, massively. It was pretty big in those days. What I mostly remember is 6.30am, the makeup chair. Oh, my God. Uh, and you know, holding my eyes, you know, on stalks. Um, I didn't like that, and I do remember running up and down outside my house, frantically wondering where the minicab was, because of course I lived ever such a long way from here, and um, and I used to get a minicab to bring me here, five thirty in the morning. So more than anything, enormous affection for this place, but remembering how I always felt as though I had a slight case of flu, because <laughs> I was always tired. And then being me, I could never get to bed. And the minute I was in bed, I was up again. So, And you're doing that day after day. Well, that's the job, isn't you're it? Doing, yes, it yeah, is. But I job. used to feel green. You did three for Hammer. 
Your favourite was the Frankenstein. I did. With it, the darling Terence Fisher. I did, I did with the darling Terence Fisher. Who, for whom, I think that may have even been his, was it his last film? I think he's getting close to it, yeah. Mm. He'd had a car accident or something like that, I think, so he, he looked much older than he actually was. And he went around with a stick all the time and beautifully dressed. Mm. No dungarees or anything. He wore a lovely, I remember him wearing a beautiful crimson, like those curtains, a beautiful crimson sweater and lovely trousers. Very, very gentlemanly gentleman he was. Lovely. But Hammer was a good place to work? I'm trying to think who did Taste the Blood of Dracula. I think it was Peter Sazdy. I think it was. Could be. Yeah. Nice guy. And The Vampire Lovers was Roy Ward Baker. The wonderful Roy Ward Baker. That even stretched beyond the film. That became a friendship with a family. He had a very nice gangly sort of son called Nick. Um, and and a, a, a lovely... What I would call a family affair, really, that was. Yeah, I became, I, I actually became sort of almost part of the clan. I made best friends with the first assistant, who was De dear Derek Whitehurst. Um, and I can remember the lighting man. I can't remember his name, but I, could, I can see him in my mind's eye. Lovely guy. Yeah, because you got you have to chat up the lighting men, you see. And so, well, you yeah, obviously sweet, I haven't done enough. Sweet mm. love to the lighting men. Yeah, I'm covered in shadow. I sure. remember making here... Mm? up the front with Frankie <clears throat> Howard. Oh, yeah. A great guy called Tony Sprattling, who's, I think, still with us, um, doing the lighting. And I remember really talking to him about this and actually instructing him to get rid of the shadows under the eyes.